Hello, fourth and fifth graders of Seattle School District. My name is Mr. Massimino. I'm a teacher at Emerson Elementary School. So shout out to all the Eagles out there. My three daughters also go to school at Seattle. So shout out to them. And my wife is a teacher in Seattle. So shout out to her. All right, I'm super excited to do some math with you this week. We're going to continue to focus on tenths and hundredths, talking about parts of a whole with decimals. Before we get started with our lesson this week, we're going to start out with a new game. So our new game is called Tic-Tac-Toe Product. Remember, everything that we're doing in these videos goes along with the work that you're getting in your packet from Seattle Schools. All right, let's have a great week. I hope you enjoy the video and I hope that you get something out of it. Okay, fourth and fifth graders, we're gonna play some tic-tac-toe products. In your packet from the school district, you're gonna find a set of directions. They're gonna look somewhat like this. It's actually on, I think, maybe the first or second page. You're also going to see a set of game boards. Now you have two game boards. One says tic-tac-toe products. The other says tic-tac-toe products too. They just have different values on them, as you can see. So when you go to play this with somebody at home, you're gonna choose one of these game boards. Now, really quickly, what you're gonna need is anything from around your house. We chose, because we have kind of like a coin jar, we chose to use pennies for one, uh, one player and quarters for another player. The last thing that you need to play this game, besides knowing your math facts, is two, um, what would I call them? Two game pieces to show your factors or your math problem. You could use paper clips. You could use pieces from another game, like maybe Monopoly. We chose to use puzzle pieces. All right, so we're gonna play the game and I have two helpers, my daughter Ella and my daughter Ryan. And so they're going to choose one side and we'll just choose, actually, we'll choose this side. And we have to figure out a way for who in our family is going to go first. So why don't they just rock, paper, scissors? Awesome. So, raise your hand if you're going first. Okay, because Ryan's going first, she gets to move both puzzle pieces and make one multiplication problem. Now, you're trying to get six in a row. Whoever gets six in a row first wins. All right, Ryan, go ahead. Nine times five is 45. So she takes her piece. She looks for 45 and she placed it on the 45. Now, once the first player has gone, this is really important, once the first player has gone, you can only move one game piece. So Ella is going to choose one game piece to move to make a new multiplication problem. Five times four is 20. Good. And she found the 20. She puts her penny and they continue to take turns. Go ahead. Four times two is eight. So we see Ryan has two in a row. Two times six is 12. Very nice. So good luck and have fun. Let's take a look at how tenths and hundredths can be similar and different. Let's take a look at the images up on the screen to show how tenths and hundredths can be the same. You're gonna notice that tenths and hundredths are both used in our currency system. That means that we use them with money. When we're talking about tenths, we use a dime. 
And when we're talking about pennies, <laughs> when we're talking about hundredths, we use a penny. Tenths and hundredths can also be written as fractions. They can be shown by coloring in a decimal grid. And they can be written numerically using a decimal. And they're both placed on the right of that decimal. Let's take a look at both of these a little bit closer. Think to yourself, are we talking about tenths on this slide or are we talking about hundredths on this slide? If you notice the penny, you're going to tell yourself that it takes 100 of these to make a whole dollar. So we're talking about hundredths. When we're talking about hundredths, we always are going to use a decimal grid that has 100 boxes or squares of equal size. If I wanted to show this penny and its value, I would color in one of those squares. Not the best color job, but you understand what I'm sharing. If I wanted to show one hundredth as a fraction, I would make a denominator showing that I had 100 pieces, and I would show that I have one of them. And if I wanted to write it numerically, I'd look at my decimal grid and ask myself, are all of the squares colored in? No. So I have zero whole decimal grids, zero tenths, and one hundredth. Let's take a closer look at tenths. When we talk about tenths, that means that we're taking our whole thing and we're breaking it into 10 equal pieces. That might be taking a pizza and breaking it into 10 equal pieces. That might be taking one candy bar and breaking it into 10 equal pieces. With the image on your screen, we see a decimal grid. And that decimal grid is broken into 10 equal pieces often using columns or strips. When we talk about whole dollars and we want to break it into tenths or 10 equal pieces, we show that using dimes. It takes 10 dimes to make a whole dollar. If I want to represent that one dime in my decimal grid, I'm going to color one of the columns out of the 10. And you can see me doing that on the screen. It's not great, but you get it. If I want to show this value written as a fraction, I'm first going to make sure my denominator is 10 because the denominator always tells you how many pieces are in the whole thing. And I have one, so I'm going to use it as my numerator. And if I want to show it written as a decimal, I'm going to look at my decimal grid. I'm going to ask myself, is the whole decimal grid colored in? No. So I don't have any whole decimal grids. So I use zero. To the right of the decimal, I'm going to put how many tenths I have. I have one. Now I can also show one tenth or this dime using a hundreds grid. When I go to show it using the hundreds grid, I'm going to color in 10 squares because it takes 10 pennies to make one dime. You can look at the two decimal grids and see the same amount of the grid is shaded in. 
the pieces are different sizes. If these were pizzas and you gave the shaded part to your best friend or your two best friends, both best friend would get the same amount. Their pizza slices would just look different. When I want to write one tenth on my hundredth side, I look at my decimal grid and I say, I had 100 little squares of equal size. I have 10 of those shaded in. If I want to write it using a decimal, I have zero whole decimal grid shaded in. But I have 10 hundredths. Although they look different, both of these are equal. Let's do a quick check. Take a look at the image on the screen. I see a place value chart. I see the word fraction. And I see a decimal grid showing me a value. What's your notice about this decimal grid? I notice it's broken into 100 equal pieces. That's telling me that my answer is probably going to go to the hundredths place. That also tells me that when I write this as a fraction, I can write it with the denominator 100. My final step is to find out how much is shaded. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to remind myself that one whole strip is a tenth. So I'm going to count by tens for all the full strips that are shaded. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. I know that I have five in the tenths place. Now I have to find out how many of our hundredth squares are left. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. When I want to finish writing it as a fraction, I put that I have 57 out of the hundred equally sized squares shaded in. And I finish by putting a zero in our ones place because I look at my decimal grid and I see that not all of the squares are shaded. Let's go through a few math problems where we are adding parts of a whole. In this case, we're adding decimals uh, to find a total or the sum. Our first math problem is 0 and 12 hundredths. And we are going to combine 0 and 3 hundredths. So you're going to notice that underneath our digits, we have place value blocks or squares. You may have used these in your classroom before when you've been talking about place value. One of these whole squares, so one of these whole squares has 100 equal smaller squares inside of them. So when I go to add these two values together, first thing I want to do is I want to color in how much I have. Well, I don't have one whole full square of 100. If I did, then my ones place would not have a zero in it. However, what I do have is one group of 10, 
And I see that right here, I have one group of 10. So I'm gonna fill in 10 squares. And I happen to know that one of these rows, oops, sorry, that one of these rows right here has 10 smaller squares. So there's 10. The next thing that I need to do is I need to add two more squares out of the 100. So let me do that. Boop. One, two. So now I've recognized 12 squares out of the 100. When I go to see what I'm going to combine to it, I have another place value block or square that has 100 little squares inside of it. And it's asking us to add three of those 100 squares. So I'm gonna color in three. Okay. Finally, we're going to show the total or what that is combined. I had one full row of 10. So that's what I'm gonna do. I had two hundredths in my first value. And in my second value, I had one, two, three. So let me do three more. So when I go to add them up, I have 10 plus five, and that's 15. Now I have to be careful when I go to write it because when I go to write this, I do not have a full square. So I still have zero whole squares. But what I do have is one row of 10 and five little squares. That tells us that our com combined total or the sum is zero and 15 hundredths. Let's take a look at another problem. Okay, mathematicians, let's try another. So in our next problem, it's asking us to combine or add the two values zero and five tenths plus zero and five hundredths. Notice our fives are in different places. One is in the tenths, one is in the hundredths. I notice that we have our decimal grids and one whole decimal grid or square has 100 boxes inside of it of equal size. So for my first decimal grid, I wanna think about what five tenths would look like. Well, that means I have five groups of 10 little boxes. So let me do that. Let me color in five groups of 10. Here's one. I know that each row or column has 10 squares. So I need to do five of them. Two, three, four. And you would do this in your packet if you had decimal grids that you were coloring in. <clears throat> sorry. So I've done, so I'm so sorry about that. So I've done five of them. But really what I know is that five rows of 10 is 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. I really have 50 smaller squares of equal size that I've shaded in. In our next decimal, it asked us to only color in five of them, five hundredths 
five of the hundred squares of equal size. So let's do that. One, two, three, four, and five. So depending on the place, it's going to look different as to how it's shown. Now, when we want to show what that is all together, we start shading them in. I need one, two, three. I need five rows all colored in. Oh my gosh, look at me go. I'm so amazing at coloring in squares on a computer. I do it so great. There's five rows of 10. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add my five individual squares. One, two, three, four, five. And now when I want to write that as a decimal, first I'm going to ask, do I have any whole squares colored in? No. So that means that in my ones place, I'm going to have a zero. But I do have some pieces. So I put my and, and I know that I had five rows of 10, or five times 10 was 50. And if I take that 50 and I add our five more, that gives us 55 of our equal size squares shaded in. Let's do one last one. All right, here we go. You're taking a look. You see that we have parts of a whole because it's decimals. You're asking yourself what you already know, which is I have decimal squares that are broken down into the hundredths because they each have 100 squares of equal value or are the same size. In my first one, it says I have seven hundredths, seven of those squares. I'm going to color them in. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And in my second number, I have six hundredths. That means I have six of these 100 squares. One, two, three, four, five, six. So now when I go to show my total, I ask myself, what would seven squares plus six more of these squares be? And when I do that, it tells me I have one, two, three. Actually, it tells me I have 13. So I would color in one row of 10 and three more. One, two, three. Again, I ask myself, have I made a whole square's worth? No. So I don't have a whole square, but I do have some of it. I have 13 of the hundred or 13 hundredths. All right, fourth and fifth grade friends, let's give subtracting a try. So the first thing that we're going to notice is a difference between adding and subtracting is we have less whole squares. We still have place value squares showing us 100 pieces, but we don't have as many. We have two of them. A second notice I have is one of our squares already has pieces colored in. Because whenever we take something away, that means we're starting with a number. So we already have a number to start with. 
And the number that we have to start with is going to be zero because we don't have a full square colored in, but we do have 32 hundredths or 32 equal size smaller squares. Now, we know that when we see a subtraction symbol, we're going to find the difference or we're going to need to take some away. In this case, we're going to take five hundredths away. That means we're going to take five of our equal size squares away from the group of 32. The way that we do this and the way that you would do it on your paper or in your packet is you would just start xing out the five squares. So x that square out. One, two, three, four, five. When I go to show my answer, I'm going to count up how many squares I have left or how many pieces out of the hundred that I have left. One easy way to do it is just start with counting your groups of tenths or groups of ten squares. I have one row of ten. I see it right here. One row of ten. Two rows of ten. So I can start writing my answer with zero whole squares and I have two rows of ten, two tenths, but really what that is is two groups of ten smaller squares, ten, twenty, and then I'm going to add my extras or my hundredths. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm going to come over here. I had seven hundredths, and all together we had twenty seven hundredths left over. Let's do another one. All right, think to yourself, what are your notices? Well, first, I notice that we're going to take something away. I notice that one of our squares already has pieces shaded in. I know that I'm using decimal numbers, which means I'm probably going to be using tenths and hundredths. So let's take a look. I see that we have zero giant squares shaded in, but we do have seven tenths. Now seven tenths means we have seven rows of ten shaded in. And Seven of these rows, seven of these rows of ten shaded in is going to be how many smaller equal size squares? Ten, twenty, thirty, forty, fifty, sixty, seventy. It's really seventy smaller equal size pieces or squares. And we're going to be taking some of them away today. We're going to be taking away 25 of them, or 25 hundredths. So what am I going to do? Well, I'm going to X out two groups of 10. So let me do that. Let me just take those away. I should just put a big X. Let's try that. Two rows. Here's an X. Bam. Taking those away. Bam. And then I have to take away five more. 
one, two, and you might do this on your paper, three, four, and five. Now, I need to show what's left over. And I don't know if I did this in the last math problem. I'm starting to think that maybe I didn't. So let's find out what happens. Okay, first things first. I don't have a whole square colored in. So I'm gonna put zero for the ones place. I need my decimal because this is what's left of the part of the whole. So I'm just gonna easily start with my tenths place by counting how many rows of 10 are shaded in. One, whoops, two, three, four. So I had four rows of 10, and I have one, two, three, four, five, five smaller hundredths. Altogether, I had 45 equal sized squares, 45 of the pieces shaded out of the 100. And this is the part that I think I forgot in the last one, which is what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to shade in what it looks like now that you took away the 25 hundredths. Well, I see I have 45, so I'm going to do four rows of 10. Whoops, I'm all over the place with this. And I would shade all those in really nicely. And then I would do five extras. One, two, three, four, five. Awesome. Well, I hope this was helpful. Thank you for letting me teach you how to add and subtract decimals using a decimal grid. Really appreciate it. All right, here we go. So, what you notice is I see decimals. I don't see anything shaded in yet. I see that we're using addition. And I see that we have two different types of decimal grids. One of them showing 100 equal pieces. And another one showing 10 equal pieces. But guess what? They're all the same amount. They all would make one whole decimal grid. Now let's get started. First one, we have zero whole things, but we do have three hundredths. Three of the hundred pieces. One, two, three. And in our bottom decimal grid that's broken into tenths, we have two of those tenths. One, two. Okay. So, this time I'm going to shade in my answer first. I'm going to look at my two decimal grids. Well, it left me with two groups of 10, and I know two groups of 10 is 10, 20. So here's 20 smaller squares, even though I'm showing my tenths. And I look at the top and I had three shaded in. If I wanna write that as an answer, I look at my new decimal grid, the whole thing is not colored in, so I don't have anything whole yet. That's zero. And I do have some pieces of the whole thing. One row of 10, two rows of 10 is 20, and three extras. All together, that's 23 hundredths, or 23 of our smaller squares of equal size. All right, fourth and fifth graders, this is our last one, all right? Let's check this out. I wanted to end on a challenge. Okay, what do you notice? Well, I notice 
that we're using decimals. I notice that we're adding. And I notice that we have decimal grids that are broken into different sizes, tenths and hundredths. So I'm going to get started. I am going to shade in how much I have. And in the first one, I have six rows of 10, which is 60. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And if I was at home, I would color all of those in. And I have five more. Five out of these hundred little squares. Two, three, four, five. And in my second number, I have seven tenths. One, two, three, four, five, six. I would color all those in. And I know that if I was actually using my hundred little squares, what I would have colored in was 70 of those. But we're showing them differently. We're showing them in groups of 10. So we're showing them as columns or strips. Now, I want to get ready to add those together. When I go to add those together, I want to make sure that all my places have digits. So I want to put a zero in my hundredths place to tell me that this over here is really 70 of these little squares if we started drawing them. So let's add up what we have. Now, this is the challenge. When I go to add these up, I notice that I have five hundredths, six plus seven is 13. I can never write two digits in the same place. So I put my three, I regroup my one. Your class might call it something different down my decimal so I don't forget about it and I have one whole thing this time now how do I show that if I want to show it this time in the ones place I do have a whole thing so I'm gonna color one of these whole things in way better than mr. Massimino is doing it so much better because you're at home and you have a pencil or a crayon or I don't know, just whatever. Mud, <laughs> slime, I don't know. And then I have to color in the extra or the pieces of my second whole decimal grid. And in that case, I have three groups of 10, three tenths, which is 30 hundredths, and I have five extras. And that would look like one hole and 35 hundredths. Thank you so much. It's been great working with you.